So today we are going to look forward to the most interesting and popular study option for most of the students which is Canada. So Canada shares their border only with the United States. It has 10 provinces and 3 territories. You can please pause the video and have a look towards the provinces and the territories. Why study in Canada? So why people think that Canada is one of their interesting places? The reason is because the education is quite affordable and reasonable when it compares to the entire globe's world education system. The second reason is that it, it does provide the world-class education system with the best resources available. So people come from various diverse culture and countries to study and work. And I feel it is also one of the most welcoming countries to the international students and the cohort. Moreover, in Canada, the post-study work visas opportunities and finding a good upper job opportunities are always at their list, as well as people also sometimes do apply for permanent residency as it is a friendly country towards giving residencies and citizenships. Why Canada? The most popular option why people study is because of their PNP program which is called as province nomination. So province nomination program is such that every state, so as you know that Canada is quite big in area, so they require a lot of manpower and every state or province need some or the other qualified skilled professionals to come there and to work so that the economy can grow and succeed. So in the same manner, all the 10 provinces and the three territories have their list already with them that what type of people and with what quantity of people do they need in order to suffice that. So therefore, when a person go and study in any one province and they want to say, want to work in the province, the working pattern becomes easy. So the PNP program can be varying from two years and up to 10 years, depending upon the type and the qualification of the candidate, where you also get a multi-entry visa up to 10 years. Process flow for Canada student visa is such that if you're belonging from a non-English speaking nationality, you need to give IELTS. And recently, Canada has started to accept TOEFL and PTE in lieu of IELTS. You need to minimum score 6.5 in overall and in each section, six bands in order to qualify for student direct stream entry. We'll talk about later in this PowerPoint. Apart from the academic, so for admission process, you already have the list of the essential and required documents like the resume, statement of purpose, the letter of recommendations and such. With that, we require your English aptitude a testing certificate in order to prove your proficiency in English if you're learning from non-English speaking nation. After accumulating all these documents, we put your applications for admissions. Upon the admissions, if you get your letter, you are then qualified to give and apply for your visas. For visas, there are again two sections which we'll talk later in the part of this PowerPoint. And upon confirming the admissions, you pay the tuition fees. And then finally submit your visa application which is done entirely online they do have an online and offline systems but we always prefer putting your visa applications online education system in canada let's understand that how the education system in canada works it is first there are universities universities are of two types one is a province set up university which is always a public funded and owned by 100 percent government and the second is private universities community colleges and universities are the one who actually gives you the degree here comes the major difference please understand in canada's education universities are only in the power of authority to give you a degree which is specifically bachelor's master's and phd program there are a couple of universities which do provide you a diploma program, which is of a year, but in the university that is called as a transferring program. That means that you study in the university for one year as diploma and in the very university you can study and get directly promoted in the second year of the bachelor's degree. So the duration remains the same. 
But whereas in the community colleges, community colleges are only giving you diplomas, degree or associate, associate degrees are in the form of simple diploma, advanced diploma or post graduation diploma. Diplomas are for those people who have graduated from the high school. Advanced diploma are for those people who are looking forward to have a longer, uh, are looking forward to longer period of education, which varies from three to four years, which is their advanced diploma. And the postgraduate diplomas are for those people who have completed their minimum of bachelor's degree and are looking forward to advancing their knowledge. They go for the PG diploma. And post PG diploma, you can always have the option to do master's degree which is again from the university because community colleges do not provide. Apart from this, there are private colleges and universities. You need to understand there are always different rules and regulation for, for the private universities and institutions and colleges. So just two example, you're graduating from a private college, you might not get a two year post study work visa. But if you are graduating from another country, Another place, you may receive a post-graduation study work visa. So we'll need to be always be very careful when we are dealing with private universities or private colleges as it is not equally treated in terms of post-study work visa. Apart from that, the degree value remains the same, but of course, getting admitted from getting admitted and studying from top-notch universities will make you more profound and efficient when it comes in terms of education or whether it comes in terms of job placement. In total, there are 97 universities and 150 community colleges, which includes private colleges as well. The top ranking universities are here. You can again pause the video and have a look. But apart from these universities, there are a couple of other universities which are state universities and are always renowned and recognized. Like some, you can name University of Regina, University of Winnipeg, University of Saskatchewan, Dalhousie University, and many more. What type of level of programs are offered by universities? As I mentioned, bachelor's, master's, and PhD programs are one of the preferred options which is taken into consideration when people want to study in university, which we as a counselor would always recommend and suggest for all of our students. There are reasons that why you should promote degree education. The degree education not only give them relevant education, but they also do provide a degree. The degree placement opportunities are much more higher than compared to a diploma programs. Just because of the reason, the diplomas are just for two years, whereas the degrees are for four years. So just to give you an example, if you were an employer whom you would have preferred, a degree person or just a diploma person, and when you talk about the colleges, colleges are preferred when, if you are changing the field of your course of your education, if you are taking a switch in your career, at that period of time, diplomas are actually the preferred options. Because if you are belonging from a business background and you want to do a psychology, it is very difficult to find a master's of psychology in university. But colleges may be an option open. In the same manner, if there's a career switch or industrial switch, you can always prefer diplomas. If you have completed bachelor's degree, it is mandatory for you to go for post-graduation diploma. Please understand, you may receive admission letters from college in diploma, but the visas might be very difficult because diplomas are the entry level education system, but not post bachelor's. So as we were mentioning, Canada's colleges do provide undergraduate diplomas or simple diplomas, you can say. PG diplomas, university transfer program. That means you do one year in a college and then you get directly transferred in a university. There are two famous uh, colleges which is uh, known for it, which is Simon Fraser College and which gets you directly to Simon Fraser University. And second is Manitoba College, which gets you directly to the University of Manitoba. And these two universities are fabulously amazing and comes in the top tier. And there is just one college in entire Canada, which does provide bachelor's degree, which is Humber College. And that too, in a very restricted fields, like say business administration, 
only. So the point is, if a person is looking forward to a bachelor's degree, she should always go to the university. Let's see the categorization and the durations of the quality. Let's start from undergraduate diploma. So undergraduate diploma after two years in diploma and three years as under as advanced diploma, bachelor's can be of four years. Please note there are a couple of universities which does provide bachelor's in three years, but again, it's hand. Post-graduation diploma to add the equivalence of a bachelor degree attained in three years and attained in four years are equal. So there's no much difference, but at times you need to be aware if a student is looking forward to do a master's degree program, there are multiple universities which have a minimum requirement of studying bachelors of four years. So we need to find a catch in this before we guide our students. Post-graduation diplomas generally vary from one to two years, but over here we recommend that you should always go for two year program. The reason is because you get two years work permit, you get three years work permit, so it's like two plus three. If you have your education less than two years, you do not get post-study work visa. Please note that. Number two, it becomes easier for the visa embassy to assess the application because we as a counselor always get an advantage when the student opt for a two years diploma program or two years plus degree program. So masters are of again two years. PG, PhD, MPhil and doctor program can be from varying from two to five years depending upon your specialization. Famous intake in Canada's are September, which is the most preferred intake. The second is January. Please know that the, there are only handful options available in January. And third is the May, whereas again, it is restricted and a very small cohort preferred a May intake, which actually leads to fall, September, January as spring, May as summer. Entry criteria. You can again pause the video and look forward to this. I understand every country has their own education system and marking policies, but this is a standardized way of how education system works in Canada and on what criteria do they accept the students. English language requirements. Again, if you're from a non-English speaking background in country, you need to have IELTS, TOEFL or PTE with the equivalence of the presented screen. So you can pause the video and take a look. Mostly all the universities or most colleges work in the similar basis and similar English language requirement. Work permits for students. So you'll need to understand that if a student is studying in Canada, they can also work part time with 20 hours. And during their vacations, which is in a year, say, of four, four months, you get 40 hours of time to work in a week. You have to apply separately for work permit after your education. Please note that there are a couple of universities and colleges which do have a program called co-op. Co-op or an internship program is similar where the students study a couple of months or year in education system and take a year working in a corporate setting or a corporate world where they get first-hand exposure and experience of the working industry and making their career most out of it. Co-op can be from one semester to two semester. So from six months to a year can be the co-op. The internship is, is on the lesser duration side, which is from 15 days to 13 days which may be paid or unpaid, but the co-ops are always paid. Post-study work visa. Post-study work visa gives you the eligibility to work after your education from a Canadian institute, college or university. You need to know that if you want to get eligible for post-study work visa, you'll need to have minimum passage of two year degree Plus, it should be from a DLI recognized university, which is called as Designated Learning Institution. So you should know that upon your completion of your degree, within 180 days, you should apply for the post-study work visa. If not, it may be a little difficult to take grant there onwards. And work visa has no restrictions of which type of employment you take. 
or your past education should match the current employment so it is all fine you need to know if you get one year of study just for an example you get eight months of work visa but if you take two years of education you get three years of work visa so it is not like this that if you are studying just for a year you don't get the work visa but it is a little difficult you can again pause the video and look forward to the exact eligibility criteria and the calculations of the work visa let's move towards how a visa application is made student direct stream which is called as sds category and the second is non-sds category which is called as general category student direct stream so on 7th june 2018 combined universities and colleges came with the alliance of you know, with the embassy stating upon how to make the expedition of the visa for the student for the international students wanting to study in canada so canadian government have designated few countries which do come under sds category what is sds category sds category is a list of requirements or prerequisites what a student need to follow and if the student comes under all those sections and fulfill all those needs, please understand all, it's not one. All the needs at that period of time, you as an individual will come under student direct stream. How to know that whether you are in one of them or not? The first eligibility criteria is that you should come from the listed countries given in the PowerPoint presentation. So give a pause see towards it we have also attached a link which can be downloaded through your powerpoint presentation if you are from the listed countries your processing of visas will be comparatively be faster let's see how so first requirement is meet the country's requirement which you are already there if you are amongst them then you should have a letter of acceptance from the university number one number two you should be living outside of canada Number three, you should be residing in the very country which you are applying from. So if you are from Brazil, you should live in Brazil in order to be eligible for SDS. But if you are in Brazil and you are living in the United States and that way this elapses and you go to non sds category, which is a general category. Four, you need to have a GIC, which is called as Guaranteed Investment Certificate which is done with multiple banks of Canada. So where you block 10,000 plus some processing fees with the Canadian banking system and you get your certificate from there. You don't need to worry, we help you out in getting the certification stuff. If you're going to Quebec as province, you need to have Quebec acceptance certificate from the Ministry of Immigration plus you will need to have a medical examination before you apply for Canada. So there are specific panel doctors list which is provided uh, on the immigration website of Canada. And you need to go to the very hospital or the clinic in order to secure that particular document. You also need to get a police clearance certificate for most of the countries. You need to have your past education transcripts ready and with the last if you're belonging from a non-english speaking nation you need to have one qualifying language test certificate which is either IELTS, TOEFL or PT so if you are matching all the criteria plus the country you are in for SDS but if you do not meet even one irrespective you are from that very country you apply through a non-SDS category so make sure that you see towards this carefully before we move ahead. And of course, we as counselors will always be happy to assist you and check your eligibility throughout. Lastly, I want to, I want to add that with SDS category, you will also need to pay your one year tuition fees in order to secure for SDS category. What are the underlying advantages of SDS category? The processing can be as fast as possible. Within 20 working calendars day, your outcomes can be there after your submission of your application. Please note that if you're from SDS or non-SDS category, your application fees 
remains the same, which is 285 with the biometric fees. The biometrics is generally collected after a week period of time, after you have submitted the application online. You will get all your notifications on your email, registered email during the time of putting up your visas application. The total cost and the source of finance can as well be referred in the PowerPoint presentation. This is for one year diploma. You can pause and you can see. Here are you can also round off the cost by deducting your earning as part time and full time. This is the cost of how one year degree program works, which is basically bachelor's or master's degree program. You can pause the video and have a look. With the cost, I would like to add one small element. If you go and study in a college, your cost is comparatively low with somewhere around say three to five thousand dollars. But the value, what a university degree has or what you get in association is quite surpass than what you will earn as an associate degree. So consider this as an investment. So whenever a client comes, you should always make them understand that why they should opt for a university instead of an associate degree. So when it comes to source of finance, you can have it self-funded from your parents or from your blood relatives so you can pause the video and you can look at source of finance pointers to remember to become a successful uh, applicant with offer letter and the visa the first is this that you should have minimum of six in each module and 6.5 as overall module with ielts do not apply for students who have several failed course or multiple backlogs have larger gaps of more than five years good academics is required say 60 to 65 percent because low academics and with gaps can always be of a problem submitting a winning application you need to for fulfill these criteria, which of course we are there to help you with and these are finally some of the counseling tips for canada that 50 percent for college 65 percent for masters you need to qualify and identify the right candidate who can fit not only for getting off a letter but also visas for canada Canada doesn't accept long backlogs. Check English language ability. You can talk about the co-op and the internship programs. You can talk about the post-study work visa opportunities and the residency program followed by citizenship program. So here we come to an end. Thank you very much once again.